Now let's talk about better consumption, which is the second main value proposition of component properties. One of our jobs now is to design this right panel configuration experience. This can either be really intuitive or a total nightmare. And so I've taken this exact same component that we were working with previously, and I've set up a couple different configurations so we can look at what are some of the best practices and what are things you should totally avoid. So to start, I'm actually gonna click into the nightmare card first and give you a sense of what this kind of feels like. Right away, you'll notice there are a ton of switches. And that's because I'm essentially surfacing all of the potential states as individual decisions for the consumer of this component to make, which can totally feel overwhelming. I also haven't done a good job of grouping properties in an intuitive way. For instance, I have this button text here and then button icon. These should probably be close together because it's that same set of decisions. But also I have to ask myself, is this really necessary? We shouldn't add things to this panel just because we can. In this situation, this text show items might always be the text. In that case, I definitely should not waste the space of having button text as a configuration. The same principle applies for the icon. Am I ever changing it from a chevron? If not, well then definitely do not add an instant swap property because it's just gonna pollute the sidebar. Now the last thing is, let's look at what happens when I switch this open toggle. See that? No, you probably didn't, and that's the point. It's adding this lesson content slot way down here, which is not intuitive at all because I might have to flip this toggle a few times to even figure out what is changing. And so anytime we can group properties that are dependent on each other, it's gonna make things way more intuitive. So now let's look at a better way to do this. The first thing you'll notice when I open this up is I don't have a whole list of toggles. And I actually think this is really helpful because that wasn't four different decisions. There's only one decision. What is the state of this card? Okay, here are my state options. So instead of making these separate toggles, I can consolidate the amount of decisions that I'm asking designers to make by putting these in a dropdown. Now, another thing you'll notice is I'm using these pencil emojis. I'm a big fan of visually separating the text overrides from everything else. Again, we are designing this panel. How can we create hierarchy and contrast within our options list? The other thing I want you to pay attention to is look what happens when I switch to the open state. Remember before where it was adding that option way down at the bottom? Here, when I switch to open, it's triggering this lesson content directly underneath the state. And that's intuitive, right? Because this is the next decision that I would need to make as a designer after switching to open. What content do I wanna show? And when I get rid of it and switch to default, it disappears because it's no longer relevant. And we can do this by simply changing the order in our components here. All I've done is moved this to be below the state that it is dependent on. Now I wanna call your attention to one more thing. If we go back to our headache component here and I switch it to open, it's revealing this lesson content. I click into the dropdown to select which component I wanna swap and there's nothing here. Now as a designer, I have to be able to conjure up what I could potentially put here and realistically search for it. Sometimes this is going to be a necessity, but if we can avoid it, we should, because we don't want designers to be staring at this blank slate here to try to figure out what can go in here. Whenever possible, we want the default that we are setting at the instant swap level to be in the same folder as content that can be swapped to replace it. So in this situation, I can either show lesson items or events, and I've put them in the same frame. And what that's going to do then is, instead of staring at that blank canvas like before, I can click on this slot and immediately see suggested options for what can go in here. So I can click on events, for instance, or change it to lessons. And as the designer, I don't even have to think. I'm just picking from the options that I've been presented with. Just like when we're designing interfaces, 
we want this sidebar to be as intuitive and not overwhelming as possible. And a lot of times that looks like adding an extra variant, even when component properties could reduce the matrix all the way down to one component. In this example, I have two sets. Here, I've simply taken everything that is configurable and made it a component property at the parent level. So I have the number of replies, which is a reply count. I have an instance swap for this avatar number here, which is a subcomponent. I also have another piece of text for when people in your group have responded. So when I click on this instance here, I have everything at once, but it's not actually clear to me as a designer, what is possible? How should I even think about what I need to be overriding and when? Now, a different way to do this would be to keep these variants as a way to group these configuration options. So in here, I have replies no, and replies yes. And what that does is it simplifies the decisions for the end designer. The first thing they see when they insert this card is, are there replies? Okay, yes. Now they can see what configuration possibilities are even available to me. Underneath replies, I've nested the count. So I can change this to two replies. That makes sense. Now I'm asked more questions. Is there group info? Yes. Okay, now I can see this is the suggested default. That makes sense. Same with the avatars. Do I want to show avatars? Yes. And then I can use my instance swap to change that number to something like three. So you can see how that experience was really different. On this side, I'm hit with everything all at once. But on this side, I'm progressively disclosing the decisions that I'm asking the designers to make. And by doing so, you can create a much more intuitive experience where you're guiding designers through the process of how to use your components.